Does alcohol impair your visual motor skills? Two randomly selected groups of 20 people were given either alcohol to drink or placebo, and they then had their visual and motor skills tested. Those who drank alcohol made an average of 4.3 errors with a standard deviation of 2.5 errors. Those who drank the placebo made an average of 1.7 errors with a standard deviation of 0.7 errors. Use a 2% significance level to test the claim that there is a difference between the two groups. Assume equal variances. Does the alcohol lead to more mistakes? Okay, so when I read the problem, the first thing I want to do, as always, is to determine what method to use. And when I see this phrase here, um, use a 2% significance level to test the claim, I now know it's some kind of a hypothesis test. All right, then from there it says, test the claim that there is a difference between the two groups. So I'm comparing two groups, and in this case we're talking about the average error rate, or in other words, the average number of mistakes made. So at that point, um, we're talking about a difference between two means. Finally, the last thing I need to look at here is this phrase, assume equal variances. When I see that phrase, it makes me think that this is probably a problem dealing with small sample sizes, because this only really becomes relevant when we're dealing with a small sample size problem. And so when I look up here, I see that two randomly selected groups of 20 people were given either alcohol to drink or placebo. So I know it's a small sample size problem. I'm told to do the problem with the assumption of equal variances. And then finally, um, I know it's a hypothesis test. All right, so let's go ahead and take care of this problem by working out the seven steps of hypothesis testing. Okay, so now that we've read the problem and figured out what method to use, the first step is to identify the claim. Let's go ahead and write the claim symbolically. Now, this problem is about two groups. It's a group that consumed alcohol and a group that had placebo or no alcohol. And what we wanna do is make the comparison between them. So what I wanna do then is to express a statement that involves two means. The mean for the first group, I'm going to label A, so mean sub A is going to stand for alcohol group, and mean sub P here is going to stand for the placebo group. And what we have to say is I'm going to test the claim that there is a difference between them. Now what would happen if I put an equal sign between them? What would that mean? That would mean that they're the same. So to say that there is a difference, we have to say simply not equal to. So the claim is not equal to. Let's go ahead and express HO and HA then after that. So looking at the claim, we can see the not equal to sign is there. That's going to make the claim and HA the same for this particular problem. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that part down. So mean for alcohol, mean for the placebo. And for the null hypothesis, we're going to go ahead and say that it's equality, right? So the mean for the alcohol group equals the mean for the placebo group. So we have the claim, we have HO, we have HA, and we're ready for the next step. The next step is to copy down all the data in the problem, and I'm going to be consistent. I used alcohol first in my statement in the claim, and then placebo second. I'm gonna do the same for the data. I'm gonna copy it down in that order as well. So for the two groups, A and P, I'm gonna write it that way. Okay, so for the A group, the sample size is, the sample mean is, and the standard deviation is. I need to cap all those things listed. I'll do the same for the placebo group. N is, X bar is, standard deviation is. Okay, so for both groups, it says the sample size was just 20, right? So for both groups, we'll use 20 as our sample size. So we'll go ahead and put 20 up here and 20 up here. It then says, those who drink alcohol made an average of 4.3 errors, so 4.3 mistakes, with a standard deviation of 2.5. Then it says, those who drank the placebo made an average of 1.7 errors, with a standard deviation of 0 0.7. And it says, use a 2% significance level to test the claim, so our alpha becomes 0 0.02, right? 2%. Okay, good. So now we have our claim, we have our HOHA, we have our data. Our next step is to come up with a test stat for the problem. So our test stat formula in this case for the small sample sizes will be T. It's a T test stat because of the small sample sizes. Then from there we're going to have a fraction essentially. And this fraction is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be X bar for the alcohol group minus X bar for the placebo group. There technically is supposed to be a minus d sub zero, a difference, but there's no difference stated in the claim, right? We just say they're not the same. We don't specify how far apart they are. So we don't have to put a number here. There's no number to include here. That's seldom the case in these elementary stats classes. So for the most part, we usually don't have a number. We hardly ever have to specify a specific difference. 
All right, from here though, then we have a formula underneath, and that formula is going to depend upon this statement here. It says assume equal variances. It's going to become important that we pay attention to those types of statements because that's going to tell us what denominator we'll use specifically. So in this particular case, because we're assuming equal variances, we have to use the pooled estimator. That's called SP squared. That'll be divided by N sub A, the sample size for the alcohol group, and then SP squared again and it'll be NP, the sample size for the placebo group. So this little P here on the S means pooled estimator. It's not the P for placebo, right? So SP squared is something we have to calculate. We should do that first so we can, um, at that point, plug it into the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here off to the side, and then we'll plug all that information into our formula. So SP squared is just the weighted average of the two standard deviations squared. So essentially, we're going to have the degrees of freedom. That's going to be N minus 1. So in this case, it'll be 20 minus 1, or 19, times the standard deviation for the problem, the 2.5. But we're going to square that standard deviation, so 2.5 quantity squared. And I'll put that in parentheses just to make it look a little neater. And then we'll have plus the same degrees of freedom now for the placebo group this time. So it'll be 19 times the standard deviation, which is 0 0.7 quantity squared. And then we will divide all of that by the sum of these two degrees of freedom, or you can write it this way. You can say 20 plus 20, the two sample sizes added together, minus 2. That's the appropriate formula. Okay, now that we have the formula written out, filled the numbers filled into it, I should say, let's go ahead and work out that and see what it comes out to be. So I'm just simply going to take what they gave us and type that straight across in my calculator. I'm going to do the top first, and then I will divide by the bottom after. So 19 times 2.5 squared plus 19 times 0.7 squared. And when I hit enter there, I get 128.06. So 128.06. That's the top of that fraction divided by the bottom. Now that's 40 minus 2, or 38. So I'm just going to divide by 38 in my calculator and that's going to give me my answer. My answer turns out to be 3.37. So 3.37 becomes our SP squared. That is our pooled estimator of the variance. Okay, now that we have that number, let's plug that information into our test stat formula. So the two X bars are 4.3 and 1.7. Now we'll divide that by the square root of this number, 3.37, which is our SP squared, so this quantity here just goes in just like that, 3.37. I don't need to square it because it's already squared here. Divided by the sample size, 20, plus, again, the 3.37 divided by 20. And again, it's important to note here that the SP squared is exactly what we calculated here, so there's no need to square it again. All right, let's work out the actual value there then. So in the top, I'm going to put that in parentheses. I'll have 4.3 minus 1.7. I'll close that up. And then I'm going to divide by the square root of, and I'm just going to type this in as I see it, 3.37 divided by 20 plus 3.37 divided by 20. Close that up, hit enter, and we get our answer of 4.48 roughly, 4.48. Okay, so there you have it. That is our um, test stat for the problem. It's pretty extreme, so we're probably going to reject the null hypothesis. In order to be sure, though, we're going to have to come up with a rejection region and a critical value. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to draw a bell curve here. I'll label the axis here in the bottom, a T axis, right? It's a T number line. We're working with a T test stat. And we're going to have two rejection regions because the not equal to sign here in HA indicates that it is a two-tailed test. So let's go ahead and put two tails on our drawing. And we'll remember that alpha being 2% means the area in each tail here is going to be 1%, right? because we have to divide that alpha into two different tails for a two-tailed test. And then I also want to mention that this value here, it has a specific formula for its degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom for that 
So basically we have a T.01 value with degrees of freedom and the degrees of freedom is basically in this case Na plus Np minus 2. So for us that's going to be just like it was for the bottom of this fraction 38. So in the end our T values will be T.01 on this side is going to be negative so T.01 with 38 degrees of freedom and over here it's the positive version of that same number and again 38 degrees of freedom is what this works out to be. Again, why 38? Because it's 20 plus 20 minus 2. Okay, so now that you have those uh, important pieces, let's go to our t-table. We're going to look up 0.01 and 38 degrees of freedom, and that will tell us what the number should be here at the bottom. Okay, so we're looking at 0 0.01 with 38 degrees of freedom. We see that value is 2.429. Okay, so our critical value turns out to be 2.429 on this side, 2.429, and on this side it's negative 2.429. All right, so again, that's our critical T value that divides the rejection region from the do not reject region on this side, and same thing on this side. Okay, so we have our critical value. Let's compare our test stat to it. This 4.48 is very far on the curve to the right, so we're going to say that this clearly lands over here, and this would be in the area where we're going to conclude that we should reject the null hypothesis. So you're going to say reject HO and therefore support HA. Remember those two things go hand in hand. You reject HO, you support HA. Now looking back at our claim, we can see our claim is the same as HA, so we should word our final answer in this manner. We should say that we support the claim. So the sample data supports the claim. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze that in down here. We'll say the sample data supports the claim. The sample data supports the claim. And what is that claim? Well, in this case, the claim that there is a difference between the two groups. So the sample data supports the claim there is a difference. I'm just going to abbreviate difference there. And let's address the final statement. Does alcohol lead to more mistakes? Well, we showed that there is a difference. Statistically speaking, it seems to be a difference between the two groups. So that much we've done. But if there is a difference, what is the difference? Well, it looks like the alcohol sample mean was larger than the placebo, and since we're saying there is a statistical difference between these sample means, we're basically saying that there appears to be a true difference between the two groups, and since alcohol had much more mistakes than the placebo group, it appears to be that alcohol does indeed um, lead to more mistakes. So the answer to the question here, does alcohol lead to more mistakes? You would say yes it does. And what's the basis for that? Simply the fact that we were able to reject the null hypothesis that says the amount of mistakes is equal. We rejected that, therefore we're supporting the idea that they're not the same, and since the alcohol number is higher than the placebo, the difference that exists is that the alcohol group is higher than the placebo group. And so that's the proper conclusion for the problem.